Oh my god. Morning. What happened, Ma? There was a murder at the train station last night. Wow, in this town? Shocking. Yeah, nothing like this has ever happened since I've been living here. And I've lived here all my life. Did they find the guy who did it? Well, that's the strange part. They don't think it was a person who did it. They're saying it must have been some kind of animal. In this town? No way! We're on Long Island, not in the Everglades. There's no animals around here that can take down a person. 
Well, that's why they're saying it must have been a rabid dog. Mom, the dogs around here are just as calm and boring as their owners are. Nah, it was probably just some psycho from Manhattan. But whatever, I'm going out. You? This early? Where? Eh, David got home from Europe yesterday. He wants me and Meg to go meet him for breakfast. I'm shocked he got you up so early after you stayed up all night watching one of those Bigfoot shows. How'd you know that's what I was watching? Because it was so loud, the whole neighborhood probably heard it. Sorry, I'll turn it down next time. Please do, honey. Alright, well, I'm gonna get changed and get out of here. They're probably waiting for me at the deli already. Always running late, just like your father. Is that a bad thing? You know that's not what I meant. Yeah. So you guys to start without me. Well, when you leave us sitting here for 15 minutes, what do you expect? I thought we agreed at 11.30. Yeah, that means get here at 11.30, not wake up at 11.30. I'm sorry, all right? I had a little bit of a late night last night. What, another marathon of Lock This Monster documentaries? No. Last night it was Bigfoot. Same thing, Will. Wrong. Very different, Meg. We have actual evidence that Bigfoot exists. The more you dig into the Loch Ness Monster, the least likely it is. I'm shocked. Well, at least, not anymore. Oh my god, and you guys wonder why I wanted to take a month-long vacation in Europe. Can we not argue over monsters for once? It looks like you guys are doing this fine without me. Shut up, you sit down. So Dave, regale us with tales of Europe. Did you meet your future wife, or did you just enjoy the lower drinking age? Not as much as the second thing as I would have liked. But nah, I spent most of the trip in Scotland. No way. Did not go to Loch Ness. Yeah, I've been there before. Rained every day and night, right? Pretty much. Except the one day we went out to the coast. It's fairly nice out there. All new beaches, right? Oh yeah, they sure were. Wasn't that great. What are you, crazy? A lot of old people in Scotland, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I just did well when we went there. Yup, it's times like this I'm thankful I've never left the country. Mm. It wasn't all that, though. We're just country. Very historic, though. No, I still work for a king. How did you get those? So we went hiking one day and with all the rain they get in Scotland, the slopes were very stable. It was a pretty nasty fall. Did you go to a doctor? Hell no. It's fine. 
sucks. My parents didn't want me involved in the hospital. So. Tax fees over there are insane. Yeah, they're insane everywhere right now. True that. But enough about me. Anything interesting happening to you guys over the month? In Carl Place? Are you crazy? The most interesting thing that happened to us was we saw one of our genius peers get so drunk he fell asleep on someone's front lawn. Yeah, but you're lucky I was with you because you wanted to dip his hand in warm water. Killer of fun, as always. His friends were right there, you idiot. You could have gotten us killed. Whatever, they were so smashed. We probably could have convinced them it was to save the world from an alien invasion. Sounds like Carl Place, all right. Pretty much. Except for that girl who got killed last night. You guys hear about that? Sure did. My dad was one of the investigators that looked at the body. He said it looked like she was mauled by some kind of animal. My mom told me she heard the same thing on the news. I don't buy it. There's no animals within 100 miles that could take down a person. Hey, I agree with you. That's just what my dad told me. I think it's some psycho hobo from an app. That's what I said. No one around here is exciting enough to think to do something like that. You think it's exciting, Will? Someone died, you psycho. Look. All I'm saying is that the people around here are not exciting enough to think to do something like that. All they know how to do is get drunk and gossip about the people they call their friends. Sure, you do. I find all this kind of crap Maybe you need to reevaluate who you think are the crazy ones around here. Calm down, dude. You're right. It's terrible someone died. I'm just shocked it happened here. I don't know. I find it comforting to live in a town where something like this is rare. You seem to find it boring. I hope you realize how messed up that is. Well, I'm a messed up guy. I thought we knew this already. Yeah, we did. And we gotta get you out of this town, so maybe you'll appreciate how nice it is. To not have to worry about street gangs and murderers at night. I do appreciate it, Dave. It's just, I need a little bit more out of the world. Some adventure, some excitement. I don't know, maybe I am crazy. No maybes needed on that one, Will. Oh, thanks. You guys truly are the best of friends. Yeah, we know. Leaving us so soon? Yeah. Still got some unpacking to do. So I'm gonna get going. See you guys later. Jeez, did you see the way he jumped down my throat when I mentioned the girl being killed? Well, you did call someone dying exciting. You guys both know what I meant. And besides, he seems a little different to me. I'm a little more uneasy. Well, he has been gone for over a month. Just give him some time, he'll snap back to normal. I guess. You wanna come back to my house, watch some TV? Sure, why not? Oh my god.
I'm Gabriel Jackson, here for a special evening report. The small town of Carl Place was struck with another grisly murder this evening, following the train station attack last night. 25-year-old Alex Treacher was killed in an eerily similar fashion to last night's Lexi Simmons, with both attacks resembling animal attacks and both taking place near Carl Place Park. Authorities are baffled due to a lack of missing neighborhood dogs or escaped zoo animals, leaving them with no leads. Police officials do advise, however, that all residents of Carl Place stay indoors after dark if possible. More on this story as it develops. Yes. I'm just going to see David. I'll see you later. You can see him tomorrow. He lives near where that guy got killed. Please, for my sanity, stay in tonight. Tomorrow, then. Whenever you want to hang out during the day, even though I'm dead tired with you, well, I want to hang out at night. You're either too busy or you don't want to, so we don't. Because staying up all night watching Bigfoot documentaries is not a good excuse for being tired. Yet somehow constantly updating your Facebook status is. Better watch that double standard, Dave. It could ruin your relationship with the opposite sex. At least my excuse is real. So your digital conversations with people who may or may not be 40 years older than they claim are more real than a creature who's sighted every year and has DNA evidence behind it. Come on, Will. Let's start with the Bigfoot evidence crap again. I've heard it enough times I can make your argument for you. Oh, so you finally conceded. Not what I said. Just that you say it so damn often, I can repeat it. Pinpoint accuracy. We'll take it as mine potentially saving your life one day. Yes, just in case I get attacked by a Bigfoot. No, don't be silly. There's no evidence that they do that. I mean that if one day someone puts a gun to your head and tells you, explain to me why Bigfoot is real, you'll have something to say. Ah, good to know you always have my back, Will. Till the end of time and beyond. But seriously, you're the one who called me out at this ungodly hour. What do you want to talk to me about? Yeah. I don't know, you're gonna think I'm going crazy. Yes, the man who believes in Bigfoot is going to think anything you have to say is crazy. 
Come on, man. Nothing that could ever happen to you in this town would ever make me question your sanity. Seriously, what's up? I, I've just been passing out randomly after feeling this really bad pain in my head. I have no idea why. Did you go to the doctor? Hell no. If I tell him, I'll have to tell my parents. If I tell them, they'll think I'm taking control. Well, are you? No, nothing. Not even goddamn sleeping pills. Passing out isn't really the weird part. The weird part is that it only happens at night. What? Yeah, man, I don't know, it's bizarre. And I have weird dreams when I'm sleeping, whatever you call it. I would ask you about the dreams, but I'm not sure I want to know. Oh, nothing like that. Just weird disjointed images that don't make sense. Anything specific? Nothing I can really piece together, but just weird stuff. Like, I don't know. One night I felt like I was thinking, I could see the tops of the three paddles. <laughs> like it was this loud, like this screech or something. I woke up in a cold sweat. Yeah, you might be crazy. Dude, it's just weird, dude. How long has it been going on? God, it started a couple days before we left Scotland. It's kept up ever since. Well, I'm no doctor or psychologist or anything, so if you want my advice, I say you go to the next best thing. What's that? Thank you. Think she'll know? Her dad's got medical background, she'll know more than I do. I guess. Well, that explains why you didn't pick up your phone last night. Texted. Dude, there was another murder last night. Seriously? Two in a row? Copley. I know, man, it's bizarre. But not as bizarre as what I heard last night. What did you hear? A howl. What do you mean a howl? You know, a howl, like a dog or a coyote or a... Or a wolf. Oh, don't even, Will. What? I know exactly what you're gonna say. All right then, Mr. Psychic, what was I gonna say? You think there's a freaking werewolf doing this, don't you? I didn't say that. All right, Mr. Level-Headed, what were you gonna say? Well, I was only suggesting that since the animal that the authorities are looking for hasn't been found, the wounds don't match a human offender, and given the howls of her last night, maybe... You do think there's a werewolf on the loose? Suggesting and thinking are two different things, Dave. Come on, Will. This is no way. It's gotta be a rabid dog or something. Well, then where does it go during the day? Hides in an abandoned building or under the train platform. There's all that garbage and stuff down there. It can hide under there. Maybe, but there isn't any signs of a dog anywhere. I mean, you have sightings, droppings, anything. I mean, a dog is going to go after anything else before it goes after a person. There would be signs of dead animals and stuff around. Do you know how big a malnourished dog is? How big? Not big enough, Dave. We'd see signs of dead animals everywhere. What other animals live in Carl Place that can feed a dog? We've got squirrels. Dude, do you know how fast a squirrel is? Do you know how fast a hungry dog is? No, and I don't pretend to know. Well, I do, and I think I do pretty damn well. Fine, then, Will. It's a werewolf. So what? How does it impact our lives? You mean aside from potentially killing and eating you? I'll lock my door. But not everyone will take it as seriously as you do, Dave. They'll keep on taking a stroll in the moonlight and getting drunk in the baseball field, even if their lives might be in danger. Since when do you care about them? Since they were threatened by a problem that intrigues me. So you admit it. You don't care about human lives. You just care about being William Stone, the one who discovered the werewolf of all place. Well, if it happens to save people's lives, then that's a good thing, isn't it? Not if you get yourself killed first. Werewolf or not, there's still a killer out there. Oh, it won't get me. Oh, really? Because what, you're invincible or something? No, I'm just aware. Well, oh, come on, just give it up. The cops will catch whoever or whatever did this. Just do yourself, Meg, me, and your mother a favor and stop being crazy.
Oh, the epicenter. Good place as any, I guess. Right. Let's get to it. What? Too busy getting yourself killed? Baby, what do you care? Well, that's a stupid question, because you're my friend, Will, and the last thing I want to see is you getting killed by some psychopath. Well, you won't. Good, then you're home. Huh? Oh no, I'm still in the same area where the two people got killed. But as we've established, there is no psychopath, so that fear is simply not plausible. As opposed to your werewolf theory. Yep. Directly opposed to my werewolf theory. Come on, Will. Even if you're right, is it really worth getting slaughtered over? I'll die knowing that I was right and that I was the only one that thought of it. And if that's all I get, that's good enough for me. Whatever happened to saving lives? Oh, I will. Indirectly, but I will. Or better worded, you will, Meg. What? What do you mean? Because if this thing, whatever it is, kills me, then you'll be the only one with evidence of its existence. And where will I get this evidence? For me, of course. Well, for my phone. But nowadays, that can be seen as an extension of the self. Hey! What? Does that make me immortal? No, it doesn't, which you're going to find out in a bit if you don't get out of there. Then I guess this is my last phone call, Meg. Ready to make a count? How? By doing what friends are supposed to do, Meg. Sticking with me till the end. Can you do that for me? What do you want me to do, Will? Open up some kind of audio recorder on your computer. Okay, but why? Evidence, Meg. Cold, hard evidence. Is it recording? Yep. All right then. Let's give it something to record. Will. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say while you have the chance? What, like a last testimonial? Yeah. Oh, Meg, come on. I know I was getting a little morbid on you, but this is ridiculous. I like to think there's some chance for me to get out of this alive. Come on, Will. Just in case? Oh, I don't know. Um... <sighs> Alright. Um... Will, what was that? Hey, Meg. Remember how I told you that uh, friends are supposed to stick together till the end? Yeah. I lied.
Will? Will, you there? Damn you! Meg? No. Thanks. How are you feeling? I don't know. Weak? Confused? Disgusted? How would you feel if you were a murderous werewolf? About the same, I guess. Except I desperately want to know how it happened. So do I, but I mean... How is it even possible, Will? I mean, werewolves are nothing but folklore, right? Well, all folklore comes from some sort of reality. I guess this is just one of the ones that wasn't as exaggerated. But still, Will, I'm a werewolf for God's sake. That goes way beyond exaggerated folklore. I mean, physically, how is it possible? Dave, I'm not even gonna pretend to know. But I'm assuming it's got something to do with the full moon and that scar you supposedly got hiking in Scotland. Now, I want to help. But first you gotta tell me how you really got that scar. Honestly, Will, I barely remember it. Remember what, though? One night my parents and I were driving back from some historical battlefield. We were on a dark road that cut in between some of the moors. Of course, the car broke down. 
So my dad and I, we got out to see if it was something we could fix ourselves. No such luck, of course. So we had to wait there until the hotel owner could get out there to give us a lift. I got a little bored, so I decided to walk the perimeter until the guy showed up. That's when I heard the first howl. It was in the distance, and I don't know what animals are in Scotland, so I had no clue what it was. So I just ignored it. And damn. That's where I start to lose it. Come on, Dave. Whatever you can remember might help. Alright, uh... Okay. I remember my dad saying something like, Come back to the car. Which I started to do when suddenly I hit the ground really hard. I guess I fell or... Wait. What? I didn't fall. I was thrown to the ground. Something pounced on me. Mother of God. Did you get a look at it? Not really. It all happened so fast. And the painkillers they gave me were really strong. So I don't remember much about what it looked like except... The eyes, well... I remember the eyes. They were so deep and bright and penetrating. Like they were looking into me. And now... They won't leave my mind. Dave? Dave. Look, I know none of this makes sense. I know it scares you. But, if you want it to stop, we're gonna have to deal with it. What do you think I should do? Well, number one, see a doctor. No. No? What do you mean, no? You can't tell anyone about this. Dave, whatever this thing actually is, it's still a sickness. And to be rid of it, you have to go to a doctor. What, and tell him to check me for werewolfism? You're crazy, Will! Dave, for once I think I'm being pretty level-headed. Okay, Will, let's say they believe me and confirm that I'm a werewolf. The next thing they'll figure out is that I'm the one who killed those two people. And now I'm getting thrown in jail for murder. Yeah, great idea, Will. So what? You're just going to let people keep dying? Of course not. Then what do you plan on doing about it, Dave? I don't know. Can't you help me, Will? Me? I'm no doctor. No, but you know all about this kind of stuff, right? What stuff? You know, all this monster stuff. Can't you just help me find out exactly what I am? And then maybe we can find a way of getting rid of it? Please, Will. I'm terrified of myself. What I might do, how people might react. Please, man, I need you on this. Alright, I'll do my best. Thanks, man. But, on one condition. What? Well, this research is going to take a little while. And in the meantime, we need to do something about your little nighttime excursions. Of course. What do you think we should do? Well... Seriously? You're gonna lock me in your attic? Why? Too excessive? No, just the opposite. Don't you think the werewolf will be able to break through this door, the floorboards, the roof? Maybe, but it's the best I can do on short notice. Well, what happens if it breaks out? Then I'll just have to think on my feet, make sure no one else dies. So in other words, just make it up as you go along? That's just great. Welcome to cryptozoology. Look, I'm doing everything I can here, Dave. But the one thing I can't do is make promises. So you're going to have to do one thing for me, just one thing. Trust me. And maybe, just maybe, we can beat this thing. Can you do that for me? Besides, I have a working theory. What? Well, I don't think I have to point out to you that every time you've transformed so far, it's been because of the full moon. But my question is, what about the full moon causes the transformation? I mean, if you look at ocean tides, it's because of gravity, but I don't think it's gravity that's causing the change. So that leaves us with only one other precedent. What's that? 
the lunatic phenomenon. You, you mean like crazy people? Yeah, it's been proven that there are spikes in criminal and sociopathic behavior in people when the moon is full. Animals too. So it stands to reason that if a werewolf transformation is possible, the change from a man into a monster, it'd be during the full moon. Why though? Physically, what causes it? I mean, sudden crazy urges and a werewolf transformation are not the same thing. What about the full moon causes the physical change? My best guess? Well, that's all you've been giving me anyway, so yeah. Radiation, Dave. Lunar radiation. Radiation? You mean like from a reactor? Well, kinda. I mean, it must have a similar effect. If radiation can alter cells into cancer cells, why not alter them into a totally different being? Because it sounds impossible. Well, so does a werewolf, but look where we are. My god. Do you think it's dangerous? Werewolves? I mean, aside from the brutal murders, not really. No, the radiation! Oh no, I don't think so. We wouldn't have a werewolf to worry about otherwise. True. Anyway, so on to my theory. Wait, that wasn't your theory? No, that was the build-up to my theory. Oh Christ, just cut to the chase, Will! Alright, calm down. God, werewolves are impatient. Anyway, so my theory is this. If the werewolf transformation is caused by radiation, then the more exposure you have to it, the stronger it is. So, when fully exposed, I'm sure it can make quick work of that door. But, if it's not fully exposed, if it's only partially exposed, maybe, just maybe, it won't be strong enough to break down that door. That's a lot of ifs. I told you I couldn't make any promises. No, but you did ask me to trust you. Do you? Yeah, I do. Good. Because the sun is setting, and you know what comes after that. We better get ready. Right. Well then, let's lock us up a werewolf. Ready? Not even kind of. Good, then you're still thinking straight. It will. Till the end? Till the end. I'll see you on the other side. See what you got. Dude, it's like an oven in here. How are you feeling? All things considered, pretty good. What's the sky like? Dark, but don't worry about that. Let's concentrate on how you're feeling. Little bit of a headache, but I think it's from the heat. Do you feel drowsy at all? Yeah, getting a little hard to concentrate. Dave, you gotta stay with me as long as possible. Fight whatever it is you're feeling. Just stay awake. It's so hot, Will. I feel so weak. And my head, it hurts so much. It's pounding. You gotta try and hang on, Dave. Just ignore the pain. Just whatever happens, you just gotta stay awake, Dave. Just stay awake. Awake? 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 I am awake! <laughs> Dave? 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 Dave?
Good morning, sunshine. Hi. How are you feeling? Like someone dragged me behind a car all night. Not far off from what happened to you. What do you mean? Dave, the word monster is not enough to describe what you turned into last night. God, what happened, Will? Was anyone hurt? No, it seems my theory was correct. The combination of indirect exposure and the sleeping pills I gave you seemed to weaken it, but not as much as I would have liked. So tonight, I think we should increase the amount of sleeping pills. Tonight? You mean we have to do this again? Yep, at least until we can find a better arrangement, or better yet, a cure. Well, how's that going? What are you looking up on your computer? Don't worry, I'll share. But first, I want your fresh, subjective viewpoint without all this information clouding your memory. So go on, just tell me everything you remember that happened last night. I don't know. My head hurts so much and it was so hot. It's hard to concentrate, to retain information. I just got caught up in my own pain. Those eyes. What eyes? The eyes, Will. It's bright orange and human eyes that were there from the beginning. The eyes of the werewolf that attacked you in Scotland? Sometimes I can put them out of my mind. Only sometimes, Will. Other times they're there and they just keep staring at me. Their burning glow penetrating my mind. They won't stop, Will. They won't stop until I give in. Until I accept them. Until those eyes become my own. No, Dave, don't stop there. You have to keep going. I think those eyes you're describing, those burning eyes, that's your mind's visualization for the werewolf transformation coming on. So when you give in to them because their gaze hurts so much, that's when it takes over. That's when the werewolf's eyes becomes your own. Dave? Dave, I know it hurts. I know those eyes terrify you, burn you. But you have to keep them in sight. Don't ever let them overtake you. But if they do, you have to try and see through them. See through them? Yes, I know it hurts. I know it scares you, repels you. But you have to pierce that orange veil. You have to accept those eyes as your own. And then use them to see. Then maybe, just maybe, you can beat them. All right. I'll try. Can you see them now, Dave? I see them, Will. What are they doing? What they always do. They just keep staring at me. Does it hurt, Dave, to stare into them? To know what they want? They're getting brighter. Getting closer. They're trying to overtake me, Will. They want me to give in. Don't give in, Dave. Don't let them defeat you. Meet them head on. You gotta accept those eyes as your own. And then, you gotta see through them. Come on, I know you can do this. It hurts, Will. It hurts so much. Ignore the pain, Dave. Push through it. See through them. Dave? Dave, now you gotta calm down. Dave? Dave, now you have to pierce the veil. You have to see. You have to see me, see Meg, see your parents. You just have to see! Dave, can you see me? Can you see me? You're not invisible, jerk. Ha! Ha! You did it, Dave! You just beat the werewolf! I did, didn't I? Damn straight you did! Do you remember what just happened? You mean just trying to kill you? Yeah! Oh, believe me, Will. 
I'll never forget that. You know what? I'll take it. How do you feel though? Are you in any pain? I was. It was burning me well. It was excruciating. But now, I feel incredible. I feel reborn. Like I can do anything. This movie is such a classic, don't you think? Well, fine then. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, even werewolves. I could conquer the world! Or kill everyone on it. Well, you take the good with the bad. You need good first to have that. Oh, come on, Will. Stop looking so depressed. You said it yourself the first morning. We did it! We beat the werewolf! We just locked it in an attic, Dave. Let's not over glorify our accomplishments. Still, four nights, not one death. I'd say we did pretty good. We did enough. Oh, come on, Will. Lighten up, will ya? I mean, I feel amazing. Better than I've ever felt in my life. I just ran two miles in nine minutes. I'd say there's some good that came out of this. Dave, it's just an illusion. You don't have nearly the amount of control you think you do. What do you mean? I have plenty of control. I can see through the thing's eyes now. I can feel its wavelengths passing through my mind before it even thinks them. Oh my god, it really is getting to you, isn't it? Dave, while you're locked up in that attic at night, banging and howling, I'm sitting on the other side of that wall, terrified at the fact that my friend has become a monster, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. All I can do is sit here and research and research and research, trying desperately to find out what that monster is and the impact it's having on my friend. And Dave, let me just tell you right now, the last thing you have in this situation is control. What did you find out? <sighs> oh, you don't want to know. Yes, I do. No, you really don't. Will, tell me what you found. All right, I'll tell you the really important part, because a lot of what I found online was either just lost mental patients who thought they were Lawrence Talbot, or frickin' superstitious garbage based on centuries-old folk tales. But I did find some real information within all those nooks and crannies, and it really scared me. What did you find out? Dave, whatever power you feel, whatever control you think you have, it's all an illusion. The only one with power in that brain of yours is the werewolf. It's planting these thoughts of control in your head and granting you these physical enhancements so you accept it. It's more powerful that way. So what, the werewolf is magically controlling my mind? Not magically, no. I read online that the transformation has to involve the release of excess hormones, which become so abundant due to the lunar radiation that they bring about the change. But hormones don't just affect the body, they affect the mind as well. And certain hormones must have been released that make you feel the sense of control. But really, Dave, it's just the werewolf getting a tighter grip on you. If what you're saying is true, then why didn't I feel this way the first few times I transformed? When I killed those people. Because you didn't even know you were a werewolf. Your mind was fighting it subconsciously, and so was your body. That's why you would pass out and forget the transformation. That was your mind combating the werewolf's control. 
But ever since that little incident with the eyes, you've lowered your guard. Now it was able to release those hormones. You're crazy. Dave, I know it sounds crazy, but it's the only thing I found online that made any sense. So you have to trust me. You have to fight the control. You have to deny yourself that power. You know what I think? You're jealous. What? You always go around talking like you're so much better than everyone. Like everyone else is nothing compared to you. But now, Will, now I have that kind of confidence. Now I have that power that truly makes me better. And it's driving you crazy. You can't stand it. You want to be better than me again, and this is the only thing standing in your way. Dave, that's insane. I am the complete opposite of jealous of your situation. I pity you for it. You have no power, no control, and something deep inside your mind is making you think that you do. And it's making you do things that I know David Cheney would never do. I want you to be rid of this curse because it's killing you. Not because it makes me feel lesser than you. Yeah, right. You're fascinated by stuff like this. You crave it. And now that I'm closer to it than you, it's making you jealous. And if you can't have it, no one can. Dave, I want to explore stuff like this, not become it. Well, don't lie to my face, William Stone. I've known you long enough to know that my being a werewolf is killing you. You thought that if anything like this would happen to someone, it would happen to you. But it didn't. So now you want it dead. You're talking crazy, Dave. You know none of what you're saying is true. The werewolf is putting words in your mouth. I am the werewolf, Will. We are the same, and everything I'm saying is exactly how I feel, and I'm sick of this. You really are lost, aren't you? Screw this, I'm done with your crap. I've got a better life now. The gifts of the werewolf have made me stronger, more confident, and all around better. And because of it, I've got better things to do than listen to your rants. Where are you going? I'm going to see a girl. I know that's a mystery to you, but that's what I want, and that's where I'm going. What are you going to do during the next full moon? I just won't let it kill anyone. I'll keep it under control. It's my power to use after all, however I choose. You poor lost bastard. Goodbye, Will. Why do you have Dave's phone? Well, unfortunately, he's in my house right now. I guess he's upstairs with my sister, and he must have dropped this outside. Meg, you've got to get him away from your sister. He's super dangerous right now. Believe me, Will, I know, and I've been trying. But she won't listen to me. She's been standing up for him despite the fact that he threatened my life. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. The dude showed up at my house, acting all full of himself, and when I told him to stay away from my sister, he basically said he'd kill me. How messed up is that? Oh, you don't know the half of it. Meg, listen to me. I'm gonna come over there and try and get him out of your house, but in the meantime, I need you to get him away from your sister, because that threat he made to you is gonna go for everyone in that house. So get those two apart. I've been trying, Will, but how come he's so dangerous? What's wrong with him? Look, I'll explain everything when I get there. Just get those two apart. Where are you running to, 
you so late? Uh, no time to explain. I love you. See you later. Love you. See you tomorrow. Teenagers always running. Meg, Liz, come on, are you there? Let me in. Meg, Liz? Ah! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Meg, you alright? Meg, I know. Where's your sister? It, it got her, Will. It happened so fast. I couldn't save her. <laughs> I know there was nothing you could do, but listen, we need to get out of here now before it gets us. But Liz, she's still in there. We have to do something. Meg, I know it's hard to accept, but she's gone. But there has to be something. No. <laughs> Meg, we need to get out of here before it gets us too. Now! Does it really need explaining? Given the fact that my sister was just murdered in front of me by some kind of monster, I think I deserve some explanation, Will. You're right, you deserve some kind of explanation. Alright, so remember a month ago when Dave was feeling that pain in his shoulder that he said was from some kind of hiking accident? Well, hiking had nothing to do with it. That was just the story he told himself to make himself feel better about what really happened. Which was... He was bitten by a werewolf in Scotland, right in that exact area, and survived. Which is never a good thing with a werewolf attack. Because from now on, whenever the moon's full, he turns into a werewolf himself. Oh my god. Yeah, that's what I said. But that's also why those two people died when and how they did a month ago. That's not possible. You saw it with your own eyes, Meg, and don't give me that monster skeptic speech now. Because now, it's coming for us, and I don't know if we'll be able to defeat it. But wait, how do you know this? Or better yet, how long have you known this? Meg, now's not really the time. How long, Will? A month. A month? You've known this for a month, and you didn't do anything about it? Of course I did! Oh, did you? Then why isn't he locked up, Will? Or in a hospital? Why was Dave free enough to kill my little sister? Meg, I did everything I could to stop the killing and help Dave. But if I would have told anyone, they would have either locked him up or had him killed. Maybe that would have been for the best. Meg, I know what you're going through. Do you? Yes, I do. I know the agonizing frustration you feel. Because deep down you know there was nothing you could have done to help them. Even though you desperately wish there could have been. That you could have done something, anything, to stop them. And no matter how many times you repeat that to yourself, every day, every second, you still have that little thought in the back of your mind. Why didn't I stop them from getting into that car? Meg, I know it's hard, but I need you to let go of all those thoughts of what I could have done. And instead, I need you to focus on what you can do right now. 
Now we're going to need some weapons, some kind of defense, if we have any hope of standing a chance against this thing. Let me see what I can turn up. You better make that a quick search, Will. Right. Thank you, creepy uncle. Where in God's name did you get an axe? Creepy uncle. Which creepy uncle? Not important. Have you heard any more howls? Yeah, while you were admiring your axe. I wasn't... How far? It sounded like it was just down the block, but it's hard to tell. Alright, we're almost out of time. Meg, turn off all these lights and lock all the doors. I'm gonna take care of upstairs. Hurry up. Right. Everything locked up? As much as possible. How about down here? I did the best I could, but why is it going after us specifically? Animals don't pick out their prey. It's not just an animal, Meg. It's a mutation. A, a manifestation of the darkest parts of the human mind. Specifically, Dave's mind. And the last people he had it out for before he transformed was us. So the werewolf being a manifestation of that hatred, it's targeting us. Oh my god, what do we do? Try and keep it out as long as possible. And if it gets in? Well... I guess we have no choice. No, we don't. Oh my god. What? Crap, crap, crap! What's wrong? We forgot about the back door.